Mr. K. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir David and today, oh, yeah, my hair looks a little different because I, I tied this red thing in my hair because I was setting up and it was really hot. I was like, oh, this is kind of this is kind of cute. I'm just gonna keep it that way. And today I'd like to play a game called Red Phone. The house that had belonged to your parents was nice and quite homey. It was left to you as a surprise, perhaps to find something to keep you afloat when you received the bad news of their death. Oh. It almost worked out. You knew you couldn't complain about getting a house like this out of the blue, and the fact that it was your parents' last gift before they died made it so much more special. But you had to admit that leaving your best friend and the house you rented together, plus getting to a new place on your own, hadn't been easy. Of course, you had offered him to move in with you, but he had refused. Rejection didn't do you any good. You tried to convince him, even offering him to not pay rent. But all that just led to a deep conversation, where he told you you had to learn to live on your own. You had ended a relationship with a toxic partner relatively recently, he hurt you in more than one way, and you were still surprised that everything turned out okay in the end. It had been a nightmare, the whole thing. But your friend had been there to help you. Maybe he was right when he told you you were depending too much on him. Live at least one year without me, he asked you. And even though you didn't want to at first, in the end you were convinced that it would be best for you. Still, not everything was lost. You wouldn't live with your best friend, but he himself had suggested you rent a room. That way you would earn money and have company. Perhaps the only problem now would be finding someone. Your best idea was to ask people you knew, and when that didn't work, you turned to online ads. It wasn't going well. You had received some messages, several interested people in fact, but you hadn't found anyone yet. Until now, the excuses were about the price, the rules you set, or that it was far from everything. And those who didn't have a problem with that gave you a bad feeling. You could only wait. Today was your day off, and you were helping to use it to keep looking for the right person. But while you waited for more messages to arrive... Go sleep, or eat something. Well, knowing me, I should probably eat something. However, I'm rather old, and I think I'd like to go to sleep. I gotta take a nap, cause I'm 30. You thought that sleeping for a while would be the best thing. You couldn't say no to a nap, and the truth was that you felt a certain tiredness for a few days. You settled on the couch, because now that you had that plan in mind, your bed felt too far away. <laughs> you were about to fully sleep when... The sound of your phone made you open your eyes. A yes? You took out your phone, swiped your finger across the screen to unlock it, and checked the messaging app. Hello. Hello. It was an unknown number. Mm. Maybe that would have surprised you before, or even scared you, thinking it could be your ex trying to contact you by a new number, as he did on more than one occasion before. But after these days, you had already gotten used to it. You took a deep breath. Here you went once more. Like all the times before, you hoped this would be the last time. It had to be the right person. Hello? That's an adorable little icon. An answer came immediately. I want info about the room. Okay, mysterious hard stranger. It made sense. You had settled on the couch, getting ready to have the conversation you had several times before. For starters, you needed to know who you were talking to. What's your name? I'm Kato. A pleasure to meet you. Kato. Kato. He sounded kind. That was a good thing. You made sure to add him. Well, hello, Kato. Hey, can I call you? The sudden question surprised you. Uh... Yeah, sure. Why not? Nowadays, it was rare for someone to speak by phone rather than text, but you couldn't deny it was going to be a better way to communicate. Eh. Mushy mushy! 
He didn't give you time to answer. The screen changed, and the phone started vibrating and ringing in your hand as if it had a life of its own. Hello? Hello? His voice was deep, tired, but not the type of someone who does not sleep or does too much during the day. It was more like someone who was always calm, because it was also soft in his own way. You imagined a person with a big, intimidating complex. And at the same time, you thought you could fall asleep if you read a story out loud. <laughs> you decided to say hello. Uh, hi, uh, Kato? Hello. He repeated, this time more effusive. Oh, I don't think I heard your name. I am Espoir. It means hope in French. Espoir? Nice name. I like it. That made you smile. Thank you. About the information you need. Uh, sure. Is there anyone else with you? That sounded like the start of a horror movie. <laughs> Kato must have noticed, because he immediately added laughing. I mean, would anyone else live with us, or do you have recurring visits? Gosh, I still sound suspicious, right? It's just that I'm not very sociable. You heard his deep laugh purring through the phone. I could say I'm shy, but the truth is that I only hate people. Despite the joking tone, you could say that it was not completely lying. What about you? Do you like people? Are you more of an introvert or extrovert person? Uh... I'm introverted, but I like people. People are interesting. I like hearing about something a person's passionate about. That's why, like a crazy person, I try to read all these comments. An introvert. I'm not the soul of the parties, either. You're one of mine, then. Sweet. You could tell by his tone and the way he kept talking that, despite disliking people, Kato was friendly and was good at talking to strangers. You tried to get back on topic. About your question, there won't be anyone else. I may have visitors, but I don't think it'll be a recurring thing. It will be less than recurring, in fact. Okay, perfect. There was a moment of silence. You opened your mouth to continue the conversation, but the boy spoke first. Do you have pets? In the ad, it said that you accepted them, but it didn't say anything if you already had one. I don't, right now. Sweet. For the next moment of silence, you could hear as if a pencil was dragging against a sheet. Maybe he was writing down the information. But that was normal considering the situation, right? Yeah, actually he's holding on to his phone so he can't really put a note on his phone, so yeah, that's normal. That's normal, right? He probably had a bad memory, or he liked to have everything organized. The last one was always a good thing in a roomie. So... He spoke after a moment in a serious voice. It sounded like he was settling into some plush furniture. Do you have any pictures of you by any chance? I need it. That was more personal, and you didn't understand what it had to do with the house. Uh... What... what for? What do you need it for? To see who I would live with. What if you're a criminal? I'm at risk too, you know. He used a playful tone again, and his voice gave you unexpected sudden assurance. Actually, he was right. After all, you were a stranger to him too. Sure, give me a sec. Careful not to hang up accidentally, you looked for a photo you already had saved and returned to messages. After pressing enter, you put the device in your ear once again. There it goes. You have it? Why did the music stop? There was silence on the line. Kato? Are you still there? I'm still here. His voice had become a murmur for the first time in all the time you had spoken, which felt weird considering all that time his voice had sounded too confident. He cleared his throat. <clears throat> you have very nice eyes. The compliment took you by surprise. You couldn't help but notice that the way he said it sounded like someone who wasn't used to flattering. Not to mention that he had an honesty impossible to ignore. That only increased your embarrassment. You didn't know what to say. There was a little silence again, 
and you could hear Kato sighing, as if he was making a decision. And after what it felt like an eternity, he finally spoke. Can I go to see the house? You know, to confirm that I want to live there and all that stuff. Don't worry, Del Zora. I really just want to see the house. Del Zora? What does this mean? That sounds pretty. I like it. His voice sounded distracted, almost nervous. Mm -mm. Kato? Before you could answer, the call ended without you being able to do anything about it. Okay. You could try to call again, but by the way he hung up, you knew he wouldn't answer. He watched the screen for a few seconds. I'd better not suddenly hear a knock at the door. You decide to clean the house. Kato, more precisely your possible new roommate, would be there in any minute and you wanted to give a good impression. First impressions are more important than you think. It had taken longer than expected, but for your good luck, Kato did not show up in the midst of all the chaos. In fact, the night had fallen, and there were no signs of anyone coming into the house. You dropped on the couch. You needed a break. Maybe the kid wouldn't get here until tomorrow. Hmm. Ah! Or so you thought, until a knock caught your attention. You get up, walk to the door, turn the handle, and open it. Oh! Oh my, oh dear! Oh dear, oh my, sir! Are those flowers? <laughs> oh, did I say roommate? I said husband. I, I meant to put husband on that flyer. <laughs> on your doorstep, there was a tall, big, and eye-catching man with flowers. He was cute and you didn't know if that was the reason you were unable to speak, or because you actually didn't expect him to arrive. Hey, Espoir. The voice was enough to know that who was in front of you was in fact the boy who had been was in fact the boy you had been talking to before. It was almost painful to see him trying to act casual when his cheeks were so red and the hand holding the cute bouquet of flowers trembled a little. W what? You were also speechless. I didn't want to come empty-handed. That's all. He explains, looking at the bouquet. You couldn't help but laugh lightheartedly. Are you like this with everyone who are looking for tenants? I don't think you really want to know that, Dulzora. You laugh again. Well, why don't you come inside to see the house? That's why you're here, right? No, no ulterior motives? Sure, but to be honest, I already like what I'm seeing. <laughs> Good ending, roommate, and the future will say. <laughs> I like this ending. I'm alright with the set. Ooh. Thanks for playing Redphone. It is my first project of this style, and I had honestly so much fun with it. I liked it very much. I'm already very interested, and why, why do you have so many scars on your hand, friend? That's an egregious amount of scars, actually. I'm sure it's nothing. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's not dangerous at all. As always, if you would like to support this game, there will be a link in the description. But there are tres finales, and I would like to see them. Uh, what if I eat something instead? Like I sh pro sh probably do, anyway. You had a very late breakfast, so you didn't feel like eating too much. Looking for something light and fast to prepare, you found a packet of popcorn that you must have forgotten you bought. You put them in the microwave, and a few minutes later, everything was ready. Mmm. Warm and full of butter, they could never fail. White cheddar popcorn is actually my favorite snack. You turned on the TV to find something you could see while waiting for news. After a while, you found a really bad soap opera with terrible performances, but pretty soon, you couldn't look away. Eep! Until your phone rang. Uh... What if I- what if I become rude thinking it's my ex? Like, what, what do you want? <laughs> the mark that he read the message immediately appeared, but he really took his time to answer. I want info about the room. 
Oh, you're just gonna you're just gonna glaze over that? Uh, what if I say no, no, d no, no, no? I'm a millennial. I don't answer my phone. You didn't want to have a call with a stranger. Uh, it, it did it anyway. <laughs> no, I don't want to call. I will not answer. No. I will not. If you didn't want to answer, you wouldn't. He had to learn to respect privacy. Uh-oh. Mm. He was calling. Again. Ga. Kato. Kato! And not answer! No! Alright, alright. I, I did it several times. <laughs> I have to answer. Uh, what if I lie <laughs> in real life and say, I I'm extroverted. I'm I'm so extroverted. Uh, an extrovert person. I like to be with people. Oh, well, if you invite me to a party, I may not refuse. I'll let you teach me a thing or two about socializing. You could tell by his tone and by the way he kept talking that despite disliking people, Kato was friendly and was good at talking to strangers. He's also very easygoing that I was rude to him and I kept hanging up on him and he's still pretty alright about it, so I guess that's a good thing. For the next moment of silence, you could hear as if a pencil was dragging against a sheet. Uh, what if I say something? Are you writing things down? Wow, who does that in this day and age? Your voice got nervous, even if you tried to hide it. What's wrong? Do you think I'm going to kidnap you, Dulzora? He had a mocking tone, but definitely not against you. He just found the situation funny. I swear I won't. I pinky promise, if it helps. You laughed. <laughs> Mostly to show you'd heard it, and because you didn't know what else to say. I'm just writing down because a friend asked me to pass the information, in case I decided not to rent. He's also looking for a place. So... Do you have any pictures of you by any chance? I need them. Uh, what if I do not send? Do not send. You could pass up a few things, but this was already making you feel too uncomfortable. I'm not going to send you that. I didn't think it was such an irrational request. His attempt not to sound annoying failed. You didn't know what to say. Perhaps you may have considered that you were exaggerating, yet his sudden anger over something so simple alerted you. Uh-oh. If your ex-partner had taught you anything, it was to be careful, even with the smallest things. You still didn't answer. Come on. Are you serious? I'm sorry. It was the only thing you could whisper. Mm -hmm. There was no response. Oh dear. Are, are you gonna come over a lot earlier than, uh, than the middle of the night? <laughs> he hung up. You frown after putting your phone down. Maybe it was for the best. When you looked around to the safety of your home, you had the feeling of having dodged a bullet. You spent- You spent a few hours talking to a couple more interested people, and it wasn't until you were about to go to sleep that a knock on the door caught your attention. You turned around with a grunt, walked to the door, turned the handle, and opened. Eep! Something pushed you to the ground, and the pain that invaded your head and back was intense enough to make you close your eyes and let out a pitiful gasp. Fluff! Por que? Well, I mean, I was very rude, but por que? Opening your eyes as fast as you could, just to find a pair of blue eyes and a silver glow above you. It's not personal, Dilzora. Your ex-boyfriend just can't let you go. And he's too much of a coward to do this on his own. What? Oh no! Bad ending. You could avoid it. Yeah, yeah.
So uh, I went back, made a few different choices, but still chose to not send the photo, and, and then Kato said, said this. You're doing good taking care of yourself. Keep that up. You almost thought that was a warning, but the tone that he used next let you know that wasn't the case. Please. He begged with a weak voice. Huh? Please what? He, he hung up. Please what? You frown after putting the phone down. Maybe it was for the best. When you looked around to the safety of your home, you had the feeling of having dodged a bullet, but your heart was still feeling anxious for the last thing he said. It was pretty late, and you hadn't heard anything more about Kato. You answered a couple more messages of other interested people, but it ended like it started. Tomorrow would be another day. Phew. Neutral ending. Maybe it was for the best. Yeah, it was really nice of... nice to him and answered his calls and stuff in the beginning, and then said, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna send you pictures, dude. So I, I guess he doesn't come to my house and stab me. Why would you do that? Kato. Well, that was Red Phone, and, and I am very interested now. I have a, no, no specific reason why I'm extra interested now, but I already like this game very much, and I will wait patiently to see any more that comes from it. And I'd love to know what you think in the comments, so you can put them down there and I will read them. And anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself, have a great night, and remember, there is always hope. Like the present, let's get this. Look, get, get this, get this. Dang old red phone, dang old red phone going on over here, going on here. Dang old red phone, dang old red phone, red phone. I'm going here, there, right? Crambo. I'm going here, there, right? Crambo. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm not. I'm not worried about it. I'm a little worried about it. Why are you? Why are you going that way, camera? Why? Don't defy me, camera. I need you. We're in this together. Might be nice if I put on my little lipstick. I can't see cause I don't got my lights on. Cause I'm kind of stu stupid. That's, that's fine. That's fine. I kind of like this. This is nice. I like this. Might be nice if I started a dang old game. I don't know dang old timing. Why am I talking like this? I don't know. Doing a timing now. Doing a time and nah. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Oh my goodness. Hey, 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 hey,